I'm Blaine Chocolate and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how um, uh, you can adjust to the synthetic bucktail versus the natural because you can't get that flare that you get with normal bucktail so spinning it in the traditional way and get a spun head like a muddler style head is not going to be able you're not going to be able to achieve it the same way you normally do but this is another option and uh, there's a lot of different style uh, brushes available today and um, Stampo has a really nice one through hairline. This happens to be one that a friend of mine, Brad Buzzy, uh, has let me use. And uh, So there's a couple things here that you can do. So we can make our own brush using this bucktail, this synthetic bucktail, the faux bucktail. Um, you can make it regular using the whole fibers. You can taper it or do it however you want. This, this particular example I'm going to use right here, I'm going to do it with an orange so you can see it well. Um, and again, this stuff is uh, pretty pretty uh, slick, so I'm going to grab um, a clump of hair here. I think what I think is going to be enough for this. A little bit goes a long way with this right here. Trust me on that. Um, so you got to remember, if you make this brush too thick uh, and you try to wrap this once it's done, you're not. It's not gonna, you know, the fibers are going to tr get trapped around each other and you're not going to get that nice nice bulky looking head so we want to keep this this part thin so to get around the, the slickness of this material we're going to use uh, your, your dubbing wax here and I'm going to wax up the uh, the wire I'm pretty liberal with this keep everything kind of nice and tacky and then uh, put it around your little deal here so what I'll do right now is so what the look that we're going to be going for is uh, your, your standard muddler head so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim these fibers so I've got one clump here and, I, and I'm doing it a little to be safe so it, this obviously is going to when we're done with this is going to kind of look like a trimmed head already so we have these fibers I'm just going to lay it on the board any fibers that kind of get out of line just kind of move them aside and just kind of start spreading it out and like I said I don't want to make this real thick so you want to kind of get this a little bit uh, thinned out All right. So we got my next little piece. So it's uh, another nice tip I can share with you is make sure you're using uh, serrated scissors, uh, good scissors. If they're not, uh, the the blades are just going to slide off of this this material. So so I have my uh, all the hair that I want to use, and I might take some of this off because, as I said, it's best to keep this part sparse. You don't want to have a real thick brush. You want to keep it sparse. All right. So I got it started and now I'm going to bring the wire over top of it. And again, I need to wax this side. And, and this will kind of make this fiber behave and not slide out once you drop the board and start spinning it. Not too much right there. I have this locked in. Be ready here. Ready. All right. So now I need to. One key thing, and and also if you wanted to, you can add flash into this. You can add other materials into this. Uh, you don't have to just use just standard bucktail. I mean the synthetic bucktail. You can expand it and key thing here though is making sure that this stuff is not too dense. I like to spread it out evenly as, I, as much as I can and if I have too much in there I'll take it a little bit of it out which I needed to do. And if you have some fibers that are crossway you can take those out. 
So that's, this is one of those deals where you can sit down and do a bunch of these at once. That way you have them if you're going to tie a bunch of flies. Or you can do it as you go if you're not going to tie very many of them. And, but this brush would be good for several flies right here. Alright, so now that I have it evenly distributed, I want to... Now I want to go ahead and start right here and start spinning it. And what that's going to do is got, it's going to help keep things going as I drop this tray. Um, we're going to start spinning quickly. And I'll hold this real quick because I have too much wax built up there. But And you can see right here I have too much. So just play around with it a little bit. You can see where, you, you know, where it's good or bad. You need to come back now with with one of these brushes and pick it out and I'll once I have it about how I want it so this is this is just going to be one way of showing you how you can do a spun head so I'll, all I'm going to do now is just take this off and attach it to a hook and then show you how you would uh, cut, cut this off now I don't need this part. This kind of got messed up. Alright, so this is the end product, you know. Um, I wanted to have it sparse. That way we're not going to, it's going to not get wrapped into itself too much. You'll see what I mean here when we start wrapping this. A cool technique that I, I want to talk about, and you know, I've had limited uh, experience with this, um, so bear with me. Um, this is an idea that just hit me right here, but if you what better way to have a slick, uh, to be able to pack something tighter than having a slick surface. So once you have this tied in, and again, we're going to try to create a muddler head. So we want to kind of be able to pack this. What you're not going to be able to have is a buoyant, uh, you, you lose all your buoyancy properties with the synthetic because it's not hollow. But what you're able, still going to be able to do is spin a tight muddler style head and have that, that, dense surface area to be able to have the flies move and and push more water so um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a UV or you can use a blue light uh, resin uh, and put a nice coat over top of the thread and this will create a nice slick surface to be able to and a nice even surface to be able to wrap uh, these this wire brush onto and when I start trying to pack it to get it more dense it'll allow me to do it a little easier basically having a plastic uh, surface so what we're gonna do um, it's just like anything you're gonna try to fold these fibers out the back and and I'll tell you what really will help is don't make your uh, you can start training these fibers to kind of go in one direction so when you wrap them you don't wrap over top of the previous wrap and the other thing is is you want to pull tight with each wrap okay so you can really pull tight and then after every two or three wraps I would recommend coming in with a bodkin let's see I'm just trying to you know, and that's this is why I didn't want to have a real dense brush because what happens you end up wrapping over top of the previous wraps. So you can see I'm really putting a lot of heat on this. So I can take a my bodkin here and pick out any fibers that might be under wrapped. You can also take a comb and brush that out too if you wish. But so now I'm gonna pull fibers back. Anything that might be in the way. Before I make another turn and again I'm not gonna try to make this super pretty I just want to show you different variations using this this material uh, you know I, what we want to get out is this doesn't take the place and you're not going to be able to do some of the traditional methods that you used with bucktail I wanted to just give you an idea of of how to achieve the same effect by using different techniques um, so I'm wrapping forward and as you can see it's starting to stand up 
Um, you're starting to get that muddler looking head as we work forward and the tighter the wraps you make and the closer they are together the denser the head will be um, again this is something I haven't messed around with much at all so it's really second or third time I've tried doing this so bear with me so once I get up to this point I'm gonna try to start pushing this back you could use a hair packer it's I'm sure as well but that's that's not a bad little um, head right there to be honest with you that's gonna achieve a similar characteristics that a real bucktail head is gonna give you so you know I'm just gonna kinda reattach my thread here just this is just giving you a brief quick idea of some of the things that are possible using this material and pull this back tie this down Oops. and as I'm seeing here is so I'm packing this I really get a I can get a really super dense head I can see that already I've already moved this back significant distance so if you see that right there and the cool thing about it is I've moved back a good eye and a half, eye length and a half um, so you can see how dense that got by me just pushing it so you can take a hair packer and really you know, obviously you want to be careful with the, I'd recommend putting like an, a racer head on your hook and then really pushing this, this material together and you'll be able to get a really dense head by pushing back and then obviously you come back and add more of, the, of this brush um, as you go. But as you can see here, obviously this is a rough, a rough example, but I, I wanted to show you a way of achieving that, uh, that spun look for a head. Um, and then once you have that, you can take your scissors and you can just start trimming it up even. And you'll see right away that you start getting that kind of same look that you get with, with bucktail or deer body hair. So, and you, you know, if you're wanting the buoyancy that you get with deer hair, obviously you wouldn't use this material for that. This is just showing you that you can do this you can get in a, and get that same uh, effect that you get with with the bucktail by doing this example. So as you see here obviously this is not the prettiest spun head but this is uh, you know a, a viable um, alternative to doing deer hair. It's gonna have a lot of advantages being that, that it's, it is a very tough material, it's going to hold up longer, it's going to sink quicker, um, you know, but it is not hollow, so it does not flare. But uh, we went over get ways of getting around the flare part, and here's another way of getting around the flare part, too, if you wanted to create a synthetic, you know, uh, muddler-style head.